Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotional. This time drawing from a year with C.S. Lewis, one of my very favorite readers. Uh, pulling this does pulls from a, a a large and broad cross section of his writings, and uh, I wanted to read this one today from Mere Christianity, um, and the title of it is Faith or Works, and uh, we. Sometimes when we read a book like the book of James in the New Testament, uh, that talks a lot about, there are, I think, 104 verses and over 50 um, imperatives or commands. And sometimes people think that, you know, James and the apostle Paul somehow or other disagree with one another, that James is all about works and Paul is all about faith, but actually they're both about the same thing. Um, it's interesting because when you read Paul, what you're listening, what you're what you're reading there, is uh, this this amazing account of the grace of God at work in our lives, and uh, sort of the the justification by faith principle, and all all of that is just so rich and meaningful, and he's really describing um, what happens uh, as we are saved and how God is at work in us and that all of that, and then. And then James comes along and gives us kind of the results of all of that. So they don't disagree with each other, I don't think at all. But Lewis is going to talk about that just a little bit, that that uh, balance of tension and all that sort of thing. Faith or Works by C.S. Lewis from Mere Christianity. Christians have often disputed as to whether the, what leads the Christian home is good actions or faith in Christ. I have no right really to speak on such a difficult question, but it does seem to me like asking which blade in a pair of scissors is most necessary. And that's one of the things I love about C.S. Lewis, the king of analogy, um, just able to to pull up something we're all well, he's, you know, well used to. It's the which blade of the scissors, or, or it's 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 kind of like talking about clapping and and saying that one hand is more important than the other, that sort of thing. Uh, a serious moral effort is the only thing that will bring you to the point where you throw up the sponge. Faith in Christ is the only thing to save you from despair at that point, and out of that faith in Him, good actions must inevitably come. There are two parodies of the truth, which different sets of Christians have in the past been accused by the other Christians of believing. Perhaps they may make the truth clearer. One set were accused of saying, good actions are all that matters. The best good action is charity. The best kind of charity is giving money. The best thing to give money to is the church. So hand us over 10,000 pounds, and we will see you through. <laughs> that answer, uh, the answer to that nonsense, of course, would be that good actions done for that motive, done with the idea that heaven can be bought, would not be good actions at all, but only commercial speculations. Man, that's awesome That's that he's pointed that out. And uh, God forgive us as churches when we get to the point where we just think this is all about, you know, the, the, the people who attend church are just consumers and, uh, and, and that all we're in the business of is peddling religious goods and that it's just a transactional relationship. No, no, no. No, Lord, uh, we seek not to attract consumers, but to develop communers people who want to commune with God and walk with God and be in a relationship with God. And that kind of real faith, trust, hope relationship that actually does lead to real change, that actually does lead to uh, sacrificial love and, and to, to give, yes, to giving, but, but also to, and not just giving money, but to giving time and to to giving attention and preferring one another and brotherly love and being an antidote to all that's gone wrong in the world as a society of, of persons. Well, the other set Lewis talks about is the ones who are accused of saying, faith is all that matters. Consequently, if you have faith, it doesn't matter what you do. Sin away, my lad, and have a good time, and Christ will see that it makes no difference in the end. Wow, yeah. 
I don't know too many churches that are that way. There are some that are that way. Um, I grew up, and maybe you did too, in a more uh, sort of a legalistic tradition and had to learn about the gospel of grace, had to unpack a few things uh, because so much of life, so much of all of the other categories of our lives are about performance. You know, how you perform determines what kinds of rewards you might receive. And in some categories of life, I can see why that, where good, hard discipline and work is important, really important um, for us in, in terms of productivity, in terms of creativity, in terms of developing a craft or a talent or a skill. I, I get that. But when it comes to God, see, all that goes out the window because grace which is what we're being offered here in the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Grace is opposed to earning. It's not opposed to effort, but it's opposed to earning. So this can never be about earning God's love. Um, and that's one of the reasons why you can never lose God's love. See, that's a beautiful promise too, isn't it? I didn't earn it in the first place, so I can't lose it. Mm, yeah. He says... If you have this uh, attitude that it doesn't matter what you do, send away my lad, have a good time, Christ will see to it, that makes no difference in the end. The answer to that nonsense is that if what you call your faith in Christ does not involve taking the slightest no no notice of what he says, then it is not faith at all. Not faith or trust in him, but only intellectual acceptance of some theory about him. Wow. Ah. All right. So, Lord, it's not faith plus works, but it is a faith that works. It is a faith that this vertical relationship somehow or another moves me out. This love that's been shown to me, I can't contain it all. I've got to show that love to others as well. This grace, this mercy that's been shown to me, I've got to be an agent of God's grace and mercy in this world. And that's how we join God in the mission that he has in this world for us, for his glory, for the good of our neighbors. Uh, we don't need to earn God's favor. We can't. Um, he already loved us while we were yet sinners. Christ Jesus died for us. That's the great news. Now we need to walk in the light of the freedom of God's grace and go out into the world and join him in the mission that he has for us in this world. Let's do that today, okay? Let me pray. Lord God, thank you for your grace. Amazing that you would set your love on sinners like us. Now, Lord, help us to rest in your love and to also respond to your grace and your mercy, and to reflect your grace, your mercy, your compassion, your love to the watching world. Yeah. Give us, Lord, a, a, a real faith that really works uh, in the world in which we live, that results in healed relationships, that results in our uh, going and caring for others and 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 lord that results in reconciled relationships between races between family members between employees and employers lord just flood our lives with your grace your mercy and your love in jesus name and for his sake and for his glory amen and amen daily devotions with pastor jim thomas is a resource of the village chapel in nashville tennessee if you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.